street preacher used the Get Help service on my website recently to ask if I would prepare a list of laws for him that govern his right to preach in public. In so doing, I put together a list of news reports of all the failed prosecutions that had been brought against street preachers. To little surprise, I found that in every one of these cases, the people that had complained about the preaching always fell into the same two categories of victim status. The very same two categories, they're at the top of the list of the police's most favoured victims. What's important to point out is that simply belonging to these classes of victim isn't always enough to tip the scales of justice in your favour. You're more likely to persuade the state that you deserve to be treated differently to the rest of the general public if you possess militant tendencies toward anyone who opposes your worldview. The more deranged and unreasonable your beliefs are, the more likely it is that the police and the CPS will do your bidding and act as your own personal prosecutor, silencing anyone whom you don't like disagree with or quite frankly want gone away. The irony of these hate crime laws is that they're designed to protect the feelings of a small politically motivated group who are the very personification of hate and intolerance. Even more ironic when you consider that these people don't actually have any feelings, mostly because it's smothered by their overriding desire to hate on anyone that's different to them and dares to express that. They have of course found that the police are willing to act as muscle for hire to ensure that these protected groups are insulated entirely from reality and the criticism of others by providing them with access to a special rule of law denied to the rest of us. However, here's the punchline in this unfunny joke that we're all the subject of. I'm inclined to believe that the people who actually made these complaints against these street preachers were neither Muslim nor LGBT. Now, what's more likely is that these complaints were made by ordinary members of the public, not discounting those that were made by police officers themselves. This is because vast swathes of the British public have become so thoroughly indoctrinated by the perpetual barrage of identity politics, homophilia, Islamophilia and transphilia pumped out by the media, they've been virtually hypnotised into championing a cause they have no interest in or no understanding of. What I'm trying to say is that ordinary people and the police are, in general, well, a bit thick. Easily suggestible, at least, as evidenced by the plethora of advertising success studies that go to show just how malleable ignorance really is. There's an abundance of such people sleepwalking their way up and down the high street on a daily basis. Statistically speaking, it's not so likely that these preachers invoke the ire of a militant Muslim or a militant homosexual or transgender who happened to be in the area at that time. But it's much more likely they triggered an ordinary member of the public acting upon their subconscious desire to conform. And how better to please the gods of the state than to give them a sacrifice of a hate criminal? Now, it seems unfair to the rest of us that a very small contingent of the general public have been granted special protection status and prioritised emergency responses. No longer are we all equal before the law because the Equality Act says so. An act that, as a first draft bill, looked like this when it came before Parliament. All right, this story changed slightly, but the pigs have still taken over the farm in this one. And the difference is that the farmers now set up in ivory towers, calling all the shots. Although today some are most definitely more equal than others, which should have been the introductory text of the Equality Act, the phrase four legs good, two legs bad has been replaced with fluid gender oppressive religion, refusal to conform or integrate, good, white heterosexual males, bad. Not quite as punchy as Orwell's missive, but at least his original text is still inspiring legislators, chief constables and everyone at the CPS, to criminalise as many people as possible for daring to express an alternative viewpoint. The fact is that if you want to access special police privileges, then you must in some way align with these two victim groups. What I mean by that is that it's hopeless expecting the police to respond to a certain level of crime they have no interest in unless you invoke the magical hate crime spell. So my advice is that if you're having trouble engaging the service of the police, what you must do is repackage and rebrand your complaint in the Emperor's new clothes of hate crime. After all, the police don't know if you're gay, Islamic or whether or not you identify with a woman on Wednesday and a nine-year-old girl called Crystal on Thursday. They will, however, sympathise because police policy ensures that 
any transgender police officer is supplied with as many warrant cards as they need to fulfil their whims upon whatever gender they identify with on each day of the week. The police have been taught, nay, indoctrinated, that Islam and sexuality are taboo subjects that the mere mention of invoke evil spirits. They're never going to question you about your sex or religion, and as fluid gender is the new fashion among the deranged, why not have a gender that shifts the moment you become a victim of crime? Or a fluid religion that, when criticised, automatically shifts into the spectrum of criminal blasphemy, as evidenced by this graphic for law enforcers. The police don't know if the person who burgled your house did so because they believed you were transgender or Islamic. But point this out to them and you're almost certain to find yourself gifted with an investigation that would otherwise have been denied to you. The police don't know if your push bike, car stereo, wheel rims or lawnmower was thieved from your property by some recidivist drug addict or by some neo-Nazi that harbours a deep contempt for your kind. Misremembered by you that time you heard a gang of white nationalists walking past your window shouting homophobic and Islamophobic slurs and threatening to take your stuff. Until we find a way to disinfect the police service and the CPS from this infection of left-wing mania, aligning yourself with the chosen few of victimhood is the only way to guarantee the interest of the police when reporting petty crime. Meanwhile, you can expect the continued growth of two separate rules of law in Britain. One up and one down. One for you and one for those who are deemed more worthy, fragile and sainted than the rest of us. Due to the subject matter of this video, YouTube have more than likely demonetized it. So please consider donating to keep this channel going. Thanks for watching.